Hello, thank you for joining me for part two of this ride from Bridge North to Brewdley along Route 45 of the National Cycle Network. In part one of this ride, we started at Bridge North Station and made our way south towards Bewdley. We made it as far as Country Park Holt in the Seven Valley Country Park, a distance of around 10 miles. We were lucky enough to see a passing steam train and after this steamed off, it was time to carry on with the remaining 11 miles to Bewdley. From Country Park Hall, it's just a couple of minutes ride down this traffic free section until we get to the bridge that crosses the River Severn. The original bridge was built here in 1936. It was built in order to transport coal from the mine on the east side of the river to the Severn Valley Railway on the west of the river. It was loaded onto the trains at sidings where Country Park Holt now is today. The mine closed in 1969 and in the early 2000s the bridge was declared unsafe. In 2006 this bridge that we see today was constructed in its place. After coming across the bridge on your left you'll see a rather curious way marker for Route 45 also named the Mercian Way, due to the fact that it crosses the Old Kingdom of Mercia. You'll see a few of these along the route, and they're designed to look like a Mercian soldier. From here, the route begins to climb again, as we make our way up through the Seven Valley Country Park. As usual, the little blue markers are there to keep us on track. Although now this area is now a peaceful country park, it's not always been that way. Coal mining started in the area in 1878 and continued to 1969. The mine and its spoil heaps lay derelict until 1986, when work started to create the Seven Valley Country Park. It was eventually opened in 1992. As you come to the top of the hill, you'll see the visitor centre on your left. This has a cafe, toilets and some really interesting information on the history of the area. There's also some kids play areas and some wonderful nature trails here. Definitely worth a visit, especially with the added bonus of the steam trains at the bottom of the valley. Route 45 carries on from here with an uphill gradient I'm afraid, following the access road to the car park. As you come towards the end of the road, it's worth taking a look to your left, where you'll see a small coal cart with the dates that the colliery here was open. We're then going to take a right and follow the blue sign and head towards Upper Arley, continuing our journey along Route 45. This is the longest section of on-road cycling that we have between Bridge North and Brewdley, as you can see by it being marked on the Sustrans map in blue. We're on the road from the time that we leave the Seven Valley Country Park until we enter the Wire Forest. However, all these roads are very quiet. They're all actually single track country lanes, apart from one small section of B road that we have to ride on before we enter the wire forest. As we make our way along the rural lanes that twist and turn along the Severn Valley, listen carefully and you might be lucky enough to hear a passing steam train as it makes its way along the bottom of the valley. We do have to make a few turns as we make our way towards Upper Arley, but these are all clearly marked with the blue National Cycle Network signs, so I had no problem finding my way. The route begins to descend down towards Upper Arley, before a final steep descent down to the River Severn itself. It was at the bottom of the descent that I actually missed the turning. Now looking back at the footage, I can see the little blue sign and maybe the cyclist coming out should have been the clue to me to make the turn in here. 
But carrying on, it quickly became clear to me that I had made a wrong turn, as I knew I had to cross the river here, and I could see the bridge behind me that I needed to cross. And this is that bridge, the Arley Footbridge. This was built in 1972 to replace a ferry as the running costs were becoming too high. Apparently, a ferry has been running here from as far back as 1323. The bridge is a footbridge only, so be sure to dismount before you make your way across. I'm afraid after the bridge, the route starts to climb again as we make our way up the other side of the Severn Valley. The first section bringing us to Arley Station, where we cross the Severn Valley Railway. Arley Station was opened in 1862 as a rather small station. It was enlarged and improved over the years until in 1963 the line was closed to passenger traffic and the station closed, although coal trains did pass through for a few more years. It was opened again in 1974 as the Severn Valley Heritage Railway extended from Hampton Lode to Bewdley. As a brilliantly restored station, it has appeared in quite a few films and TV series over the years. Most recently, the Netflix film Enola Holmes, where it featured as Ferndale Station. Continuing from Arley Station, the road continues to go upwards. This is in fact the biggest climb of the ride. From crossing the River Severn, just before Arley Station, we have about two and a half miles of upward cycling before we reach the high point of the ride, just inside the Wire Forest. It was at this point I began to question the recent one bike conversion I'd done to my mountain bike. That is, removing the front two chain rings and putting one single chain ring on the front. And without changing the rear cassette to a larger one, this meant I didn't have as quite an easy ratio gear as I'd previously had. But to be honest, I think my question of my choice was more down to the fact that I hadn't cycled as much over the summer as I normally do, and the fact that I'd already traversed the Seven Valley a couple of times at this point, so the legs were beginning to tire. After cycling through some very pretty villages, we do eventually make it here to the turning, which takes us onto a small piece of B road we need to go up before we make our way into the wire forest. Be careful at this turning because it is quite a blind one with a house blocking your view to the right. After a small stint on this B road, we come into the wire forest. Look out for the National Cycle Network sign on the right and take the left turn into the car park. This is the third section of this ride I was really looking forward to riding. The wire forest is somewhere I've not been before, and as this section, as shown on the Sustrans map in yellow, is all off-road, I was really looking forward to see how it was. As we're welcomed into the wire forest, there is a little bit more climbing to do before we hit the high point of this ride. But what a beautiful place to be cycling uphill in. My legs at this point did get a little bit of a second lease of life, maybe knowing that the high point of this ride wasn't far off and that there was only a couple more uphill blips in the last few miles into Bewdley. Eventually this track comes to a junction with the fire road and the little blue sign on the tree directs us left. And from here we have a nice long stretch of downhill. The route does eventually flatten out at the bottom of a valley where it crosses over a small stream on this wooden bridge. After a short climb we're directed to take this sharp left onto this fairly long straight piece of track that runs through this beautiful forest. The track continues with a gentle downhill gradient all the way to the edge of Brewdley. Further along this bit of cycleway, I notice a bridge going over the top, and it was at this point it clicked in my head. The reason that this section has such a gentle gradient and is so straight is because it's got to be an old railway line. All the telltale signs were there. It's the former Bewdley to Wooferton railway line. This was opened in 1864. It split off from the Seven Valley Railway just north of Bewdley, made its way over the River Severn, 
and through the Wyre Forest, west towards Wooferton, where it joined the main Shrewsbury to Hereford line. Running through fairly rural areas, it was never going to be the busiest line in the world. Closure was proposed in 1960, and in 1962 it was closed to passenger traffic. And then in 1965 it was closed altogether, and dismantling of the track began. At the end of this section we take a right turn for one more bit of climbing before we make our descent through Bewdley to the town centre on the edge of the River Severn. If you've watched the video to this point I'm guessing you've enjoyed it and in that case please please do subscribe to the channel. It will cost you nothing but makes a massive difference and you'll be sure not to miss any of my future videos. We're ending the journey here in Bewdley town centre which really is a pretty little town on the banks of the River Severn. Thank you very much for watching, if you did enjoy it please do drop it a like. Keep cycling and look out for my future videos and check out some of my older videos on the National Cycle Network.